November 24, 2013. Guys, we're looking at iSun 3D. We've got it set for today's date on the 24th, showing here that iSun is 24 million miles from the sun. Guys, it's getting close. Look how far inside Mercury's orbit that it's getting. Now, on the 25th tomorrow, it will be 19 million miles. You see that? That means it'll be moving 5 million miles per day. On the 27th, it's going to be up to 7 million miles a day. Notice that. Now, on 28th, it's going to wrap around the sun. Look how close this will be. Again, it will be a miracle if it survives this close impact with its mass and, uh, I think, multiple objects. But one of the things that, had, had, that no one's put into this model, of course they couldn't foresee it, is that on the 19th, when Ison's tail and the outer coma was blown back, that changed the timeline line of the debris trail probably by about seven days. In other words, from the point that Ison comes around, any objects back in that trail, if they follow Ison like a lot of these comets that break apart do, then you've got about six or seven days there of objects coming in. Now, this is one of the questions that I keep getting asked. Notice we're right here at December 25th, 26th, around Christmas. This is the time that ISUN is coming over the Earth. If nothing changes, nothing breaks apart, all things hold to the model, it's going to be 40 million miles above us. Now, if you click over here on the right at the numbers, go down to number four in the red, you'll click on 28th of November and you'll see that they're giving it a chance of breaking apart. Guys, and the reason I'm coming here for a reason, I had the questions and I want to remind you of something. I've done videos on that's called ISUN's Debris Trail and I'm going to show you some images in this one. But again, ISUN will be over us and the records of the comets that have broken apart with pieces hitting the earth have come over the top of the earth. Not, not only the one that came through in 1490, it came over the North Pole. It came down east over Australia and struck. Now, <clears throat> that one's recorded because they were able to see it. Now, what we've got here, and I'll show you, it's called the Carolina Bays. As we look at the second week of going through the uh, incoming debris trail, we have what's called the Carolina Bays, guys. And I'm going to show you what, on Google Map what they've done. And I'm going to put a link to this for you guys who have never used it. But there's, an, there's a uh, plug-in that puts this information in there. And the red line in the middle that goes right over Paul Begley and Old Marine and all you guys is where the comet that struck was coming it was coming over the top of the earth and down and that's the path that it would have maintained except it hit where the yellow lines cross up near the Great Lakes and there's scatter shots there's craters all over both from if you look east to Nebraska excuse me west through Nebraska east all the way down the east coast heavily into Carolinas if you remember the story of the uh, Native Americans that were there 12,000 years ago, they saw it coming. And it, the comet did not strike the Earth, but a piece of it did because after everything and all hell broke loose, they saw the comet going back into outer space. But it broke apart. And it these this is infrared images of the Carolina area, guys. Look at Shannon, Red Springs, Prospect, Maxton, Laurenburg, all through here. This is Google Earth infrared another infrared image of this area and the native americans have a story of the tribes that live there they saw it coming they dug themselves into the mud it burned all the animals and all the trees up again 12,000 years ago when some of this happened but it came in over the earth no one knows what's going to happen guys but this is history history repeats itself and it's a heads up no one knows but guys this is a big comet coming in. Be safe.